I, I hope we can revive more of the community. And uh, one of the things that um, really giving me a kick right now is the, the amount of um, people that have contacted me that kind of abandoned Magento mm -hmm. uh, publicly or non-public um, and are contacting me like, well, it looks like we might have fun again doing Magento stuff and we're super interested to try it again because uh, we miss the great old days of doing Magento and um, uh, from, from what we've seen, uh, it looks like it could be fun again. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, part of, part of what I'm trying to do is build a community uh, within, within the licensees and the agencies that will join. Um, we have a handful of them, people that I fully trusted with, with having a look at the code and trying it out. So there's a handful of people from different agencies that are currently checking it. Um, and um, yeah, you can already see the interaction and people being excited. And um, yeah, that really gives me hope for the future that we can build out a, a, a proper community of people sharing things. Like One of the downsides of my system is that um, we need to rewrite some stuff for third-party modules. Mm. So the, the presentation layer, so the template part, of course, uh, we won't have required JS and Knockout and jQuery. Um, so uh, whatever plugin you install uh, or module you install, um, it will break and uh, you need to rewrite some of the JavaScript. But um, there also lies the power that we can actually still install plugins. Mm -hmm. And the whole headless thing um, brings us into territory where everything is bespoke. Um, there's currently there's, there's no plugins. There's slowly there, there's some plugin mechanisms are, are being uh, put in place. But mm -hmm. from what I've seen, uh, all the successful PWA integrations are completely bespoke. They rip everything out and rebuild it. Uh, and and uh, there's a lot of custom work involved. Mm -hmm. And um, with, with keeping the current front end, we can keep everything that we like and enjoy to work with. Uh, and a lot of those things actually come back from Magento 1, the, the XML, um, uh, working with blocks and stuff. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's great. It's a great exercise to simplify those layers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to really reduce the complexity of the XML. Uh, no no 100 level deep uh, nested uh, XML tags. Um, and... Um, yeah, keeping the great things that we enjoy and that we know and then use the best tools to get you on your way as quick as possible. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> one of the responses from my colleagues was um, <clears throat> um, the fact that she could actually just build stuff without constraints. Yeah. And the, the basis is solid. And with Alpine, uh, it's so similar to Vue. So especially if you have experience with Vue.js, you're on your way within a day you're building components and we use graphql where it makes sense mm -hmm. graphql is super fast it can be cached you can load stuff asynchronously it's it's a it's ajax calls and steroids mm -hmm. um uh, so that's that's taking the best part of of the the new generation magento um and uh, at the same time, we have backwards comp uh, compatibility with the old mechanisms uh, like the section data. I know, don't know how familiar you are with the um, customer section data. Well, mm, listeners that work with it will will know. Um, we we well, in short, Magento keeps um, your your customer specific data in local storage. It pulls data in with AJAX mm -hmm. and then stores your customer information, your card data. Um, such kind of things. It's stored in local storage, and only if it's invalidated, it pulls it uh, pulls a newer version from the server. Oh, okay. Um, so a lot of third-party modules uh, utilize that. So, for example, a, a Google Tag Manager, it looks at that local storage data and pulls in the customer name mm. and the items that they have in the cart. And uh, we actually rebuild one of those Tag Manager plugins uh, within two hours. Nice. To make it compatible with Huva. Yeah. Um, so that's that's just taking the logic that's already there from the old front end um, and uh, strip everything out that's that's uh, that comes from the library. Mm -hmm. So that's that's, that's low dash and and uh, what else different things to do manipulations on on objects and arrays. 
and uh, modern browsers can do all this stuff. So just throw it out.